Dune Part 2 introduces a number of new characters to this epic sci-fi universe, but perhaps none more important than Austin Butler's Fade Rotha Harkonnen. As if Timothy Chalamet's Paul Atreides didn't have enough enemies already, now he's forced to face off with the heir apparent of House Harkonnen. It's safe to call Fade Rotha Paul's arch nemesis in the new movie. These two young men truly are two sides of the same coin. But what makes Fade Rotha the twisted mirror image of Paul? And how are both men connected to the Bene Gesserit and their centuries-long breeding program? Here's what you need to know about the Paul slash Fade rivalry heading into the new Dune movie. Like his brother Glosu Raban, played by Dave Bautista, Fade Rotha is the nephew of Stellan Skarsgård's Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. Though he shares his brother and uncle's bloodthirsty tendencies, Fade could hardly be more different than Raban. Where Raban is known for his brutality and cruelty, earning him the nickname Beast Raban, Fade Rotha is more subtle and cunningly sadistic. That cunning is on full display with Fade's favorite pastime, dueling slaves in the gladiator arena. Fade is one of the most skilled swordsmen in the entire universe, and he enjoys honing his abilities before a massive crowd. But though he has the talent to rival even men like Paul and Josh Brolin's Gurney Halleck, Fade isn't the type of fighter to leave anything to chance, even if it means cheating. He is notorious for coating his blades in poisons that leave his opponents paralyzed or writhing in unimaginable pain. Poison. He'll even take advantage of hypnotically planted code words that can shut his opponent's bodies down in a single command. Whatever it takes to win the fight and look good in front of a crowd, it's that cunning that makes Fade so attractive a candidate as heir to Baron Harkonnen. The Baron has no wife and children of his own, leading him to effectively adopt his brother Abelard's two sons instead. The Baron molds the two men in his own image, twisting them in ways that would have never been possible if they were raised by the more honorable Abelard. In fact, Raban wound up murdering his father with his bare hands, which is how he originally acquired the Beast Raban nickname. The Baron sees in Fade a young man with the potential to succeed him and even ascend the Imperial throne. Cementing House Harkonnen's place at the top of the galactic food chain is really the Baron's ultimate goal in Dune, even if he himself won't be the one to become Emperor. Getting revenge against House Atreides and settling their ancient feud is just icing on the spice cake. In Dune Part 2, Fade enters the stage as a possible replacement to take over the stewardship of Arrakis. Historically, the Baron has relied on Raban to enforce his will and keep the supply of spice flowing by any means necessary. The Baron hopes that by replacing Raban with Fade Rotha, the citizens of Arrakis will look to Fade as their savior. Anything beats toiling away under the iron grip of Beast Raban. And that's not to say that Fade and his uncle are in perfect lockstep with one another. Fade is young and impulsive. He understands his uncle holds the key to great power and wealth, but he lacks the patience to fully appreciate the Baron's complex, far-reaching plans. His uncle is both the key to Fade's rise and an obstacle standing in his way. Dune was doing Game of Thrones decades before Game of Thrones was a thing, so expect plenty of conflict among family members as the sequel unfolds. But ultimately, Fade's true enemy isn't his uncle, but the young heir to House Atreides. Paul Atreides and Fade Rotha Harkonnen are linked in more ways than one. Sure, they're both young men who happen to be good with a blade who represent the future of their respective houses, but there's more to it than that. Paul and Fade are both the result of a centuries-long effort to produce the ultimate cosmic messiah, known as the Kwisatz Haderach. Creating the Kwisatz Haderach is the ultimate goal of the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood. The name roughly translates to the one who can be many places at once. The Kwisatz Haderach is a male Bene Gesserit with the ability to access the genetic memories of both his male and female ancestors, effectively breaking down the barriers between space and time and creating a perfect superhuman that can guide the galaxy forward. Creating a Kwisatz Haderach is far easier said than done, however. The Sisterhood has been hard at work for many generations, orchestrating a complex breeding program where Bene Gesserit sisters are paired with men with desirable genetic traits. Little by little, the sisters hope to create the building blocks for their Kwisatz Haderach. By the time of the Dune movie, the breeding program should have reached its final stage. The sisters calculate that the process will be complete when an Atreides daughter is wed to Fade Rotha. 
There's just one problem. Rebecca Ferguson's Lady Jessica was supposed to produce that daughter with Oscar Isaac's Duke Leto. Instead, Jessica gave in to Leto's desire for a son, throwing the entire breeding program into disarray. That's why we see Charlotte Rampling's Gaius Helen Mohayim testing Paul at the beginning of the first movie. Reverend Mother Mohayim is desperate to learn if their breeding program can be salvaged. Can Paul's offspring still become the Kwisatz Haderach? Could Paul himself be the Kwisatz Haderach? The answers are unclear at the time, but over the course of the film, it becomes obvious that Paul is coming to grips with a great and terrible power. This is why the stakes are so high as Paul and Fade Rotha begin their feud in Dune Part 2. Both men are at the mercy of forces far greater than them. They're both the result of centuries of careful planning and breeding and preparation. They're both at the end stages of a long effort to produce a messiah who can reshape the galaxy. If either one dies, it could set the Sisterhood's breeding program back decades or centuries. This is also where Leah Sedu's character Lady Margot Fenrin comes in. Lady Margot is another high-ranking member of the Bene Gesserit, and one committed to seeing the breeding program through to its conclusion. Margot is tasked with seducing Fade in the hope of salvaging his genetic material. If he can't father the Kwisatz Haderach, then hopefully he can still be a building block towards the Messiah. That's the hope, anyway. We'll see what comes of this potential union in Dune Part 2. Fade Rotha may be the twisted antithesis of Paul Atreides, but the two characters have yet to actually meet in Denny Villeneuve's Dune universe. Fade himself doesn't appear in the first movie, and if the sequel is anything like the book or the various other adaptations, he and Paul won't cross blades until the very end of Dune Part 2. There's not really room to have the characters meet before then. As Dune Part 2 opens, Paul is living among the Fremen and building the legend that will soon carry his people to a holy war against the Imperium. Meanwhile, Fade is living on Gieti Prime with his uncle and perfecting his abilities in the arena. As far as Fade and his family are concerned, Paul died during the sneak attack on House Atreides. Even though these characters don't meet until the very end of their shared story, their rivalry remains one of the most iconic and memorable parts of the Dune saga in all its forms. That's thanks in no small part to David Lynch's 1984 adaptation, which features Kyle MacLachlan as Paul and the musician Sting as Fade. Fade. The movie culminates in a tense duel between the heirs of House Atreides and Harkonnen, all while the gathered forces of the Fremen and Imperium look on. Dune 1984 may be an imperfect adaptation of best, but Sting's performance as Fade remains one of the most beloved elements of the film. It's a scenery-chewing performance in a film full of over-the-top acting, and there's just something about the sinewy, calculating, and charismatic Fade Rotha that calls for a rock star to play him. You see your death. My blade will finish you. Not only does Sting play Fade in the 1984 version, director Alejandro Jodorowsky eyed Mick Jagger to play Fade in his doomed adaptation. Even in Dune Part 2, Butler is probably best known for playing Elvis Presley in 2022's Elvis. The tradition lives on. Now that Dune Part 2 is nearly here, we'll once again see what happens when two of the deadliest fighters in the galaxy finally duel. Can Paul, trained by two of the best swordsmen in the Imperium and gifted with the powers of prescience, defeat Fade Rotha in one-on-one -on -one battle? Or will Fade, with his equally deadly skill and penchant for cheating, triumph over the supposed Kwisatz Haderach? Great and mysterious forces have been maneuvering these two men into mortal combat, and we're about to see what happens when they cross blades. What are you most excited to see in Dune Part 2? Let us know in the comments, and make sure you like and subscribe to IGN wherever you watch.